Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie if you are new here and in today's video I'm doing another speed reviews talking about some new products that I have tried recently and my thoughts on them So if you guys are interested in hearing me give some reviews on some new stuff, then just keep on watching so the very first product is going to be the NYX Sweet Cheeks Matte Blushes. I have the shades So Taupe, um, Bang Bang, and Rose and Play. Let me swatch them for you guys really quick. Really quick while I am swatching these. If you guys are interested in seeing the look that I am currently wearing, it is from my Palette Throwback Thursday with one of my ColourPop Z palettes and Norvina Volume 4. Four, I will link that up in the eye and down below for you guys. So here are the shades right here. I have So Taupe, Bang Bang, and then Rose and Play. I really like these. I think that they're very, very pretty. These aren't new by any means, but where they originally lost me was the way that they look. I know that sounds weird, but like they don't, they don't swatch how they look. They are, they look significantly darker in the pan and even darker online than they actually do look in real life. So because of that, I held off for a really, really long time on purchasing them because I didn't, I didn't think that they would work for my skin tone at all. Um, I hit a point where I only had warm tone blushes and I was like, I do enough cool toned looks and I have a singular cool toned blush that I was like, I need to, I need to buy more because I'm using the same blush over and over and over again. And it's very pretty, but sometimes I like a little, I like to add a little bit of spice. So I just kind of threw caution to the wind and picked these up and I'm really, really happy with them. Honestly, they apply beautifully. They are really smooth. They're pigmented enough without being so incredibly pigmented that it's overwhelming. I love the shade So Taupe to do contour with. It's not, I have another contour shade that I, I haven't used since October of last year. It is so incredibly pigmented that it, I just, I couldn't, it was just too much. This one isn't too much. It's perfect for my skin tone. Just a little gentle contour. Um, and as for the actual blushes, they're beautiful, not crazy pigmented, but pigmented enough that they show up. And I just, I really like them. I think that they're really nice and they're really pretty. On the same vein is the NYX Sweet Cheeks Glow Blush. This is the shade Fig. This one, I don't like the glow ones nearly as much as I like the matte ones. They just don't apply quite as well. Brushes don't work as good with them. This one is definitely a little bit too dark for me. Um, when I blend it out, it works a little bit better, but it, it can be a little bit too much on my cheeks. It's just not, it's pretty, but it's just not for me. I have glowy blushes that I think perform better, blend better. I'm actually going to be showing you guys some in just a little bit in this video. So it's just, it's pretty, again, it looked so dark online and this one this one actually is pretty dark but it looked even darker online this one just isn't isn't for me as much it's a little bit too dark it just doesn't apply quite as well the brush is like it works well on a swatch but a brush just doesn't pick it up with the right application it's just a little bit it borderlines almost on being the same texture as a highlight, how it's a little bit more emollient, a little bit thicker, and brushes just, especially blush brushes, just don't really work too well with that style. Next up is the Makeup Revolution Super Fix Super Hold Misting Spray. It says it has an ultra matte finish with aloe and vitamin E, vitamin E. Um, I wouldn't call this super ultra matte by any means. When I'm doing a very glowy look, I won't use this, but it's not like, I have matte setting sprays that you can feel how matte they are, you can tell how matte they are. This is a little bit more mattifying than your Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, but it's not, it's pretty on par with like your standard longer lasting setting sprays. It's not something that's gonna make your skin super dewy, but it's also going to help with the longevity of your makeup. I have used 
quite a bit of this actually. Um, and the reason that I purchased this is because it is the same type of, or very similar rather, type of format as the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, which I love. Um, it's not continuous. I will say that it does come out in a mist. Yes, just land all over me. Um, it does come out in a mist setting. It's very close to hairspray style, which I do like. It's a lot finer than your standard nozzle setting sprays. Um, I will say that the very, very first time that I, when I first pulled this out of the box, I sprayed it on my hand and I kind of let it dry down a little bit. And I was like, Ooh, this is sticky. I don't think that I'm going to like it. And I like the first time I tried it, I had my husband come and cover my eyes. Cause I was like, Oh, this is going to mess up my makeup, but I, I want to try it. Um, it never did mess up my makeup. It doesn't cause my eyeshadow to crease or anything like that. Um, I do use like a little fan, so I'll spray down my face and then I'll keep my eyes closed and I'll have my make like the setting spray dry with a little fan. It's not sticky on the face at all. I have it on right now and it's, it's not sticky by any means. Um, my only complaint is, I don't know if you can see that right there, the silver rim around where it's what holds the cap on is actually starting to get rust on it. Um, so they really should have used a, a different metal for the tin. Um, it's not a huge deal. Rust isn't, rust isn't what causes tetanus despite the stories of, Oh, I stepped on a rusty nail. It's actually what's in the dirt. If you step on it outside rust like this is fine. Um, if it starts to get significantly worse, I'm going to go ahead and throw it away. But just this little bit that's on there right now isn't a huge deal to me. I just hope that it doesn't get worse. Um, but other than that, I do really, really like this and I do recommend it. I would just hope that they would fix that metal issue that is causing some rusting. Next up is the Pixie Plus C Vitamin Glowy Powder, and this is in the shade Peach Dew, which was the only one that they launched with that I saw online. Um, it's got a twist off, if that interests you. And this is what it looks like. It's a very, very, very pretty highlight. I purchased it because I have, I, I love peachy highlights. The peach shade from the Nicole Guerrero palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills is hands down my absolute favorite highlight. So I'm always looking for more. I just, I love peach highlights so, so, so much. This one is a little bit too deep for me. You can kind of, if I turn my hand so it's not reflecting, you can still see it. So I definitely use it. I blend it in more with my blushes and on the very tops of my cheeks if I feel like it's necessary when I'm looking straight forward I will put a little bit of a brighter highlight on as a topper peach highlights paired with the white gold like more stronger yellow undertone highlights are gorgeous together it makes just such a it, they mix together so beautifully but this is what it looks like it's a very 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 pretty highlight pixie kills it when they do highlights very, this one isn't nearly as reflective as some of the other highlights that I have from them, but they're very pretty. They go on beautifully. They don't accentuate texture. It's got a gorgeous shine to it. We'll see kind of as the summer progresses on and I get a little bit more color on my skin, how it sits. I don't think that this will ever be a highlight that I'll be able to use in the winter unless I use it as a blush topper. I got a, uh, ring light, which I now have my camera sitting in the middle of the ring light because the, the lights that I had, I have one of them set up, but the lights that I had put off a lot of heat. So I was trying to take down some of that heat because that it, it's not going to vibe for Southern California summers. Um, and I didn't realize how much I just like when I walk away from the camera, how I just see a ring in my vision just from staring at the camera. The next product is not a product that I have anymore. I actually did return it and that is going to be the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. Um, I did purchase it online. I did a little like buy online, pick up in store situation. So I was guessing on the shade range. That was my first problem is I got a shade that was way too light, but I tried it out anyway with the thought process of, okay, if I do really like this foundation, then I will exchange it for a shade that I do, does work for me. Um, so it was, 
smidge too fair for me but the foundation overall I absolutely hated it it was it did not give me the best skin ever like first and foremost it sat on my skin in just a really gross looking way and it was I'm somebody who likes higher coverage foundations I won't shit on a product if it has lower coverage because I can recognize where there can be a use for that in my collection the coverage was patchy at best and it had lower coverage so there was spots on my face that had coverage spots that just look patchy and gross and it just sat on my skin and accentuated any dryness that I had on my skin if I had like a breakout or anything like that it just accentuated it and made it look so incredibly incredibly gross and it just was not it was not good um, I the the couple times that I did try to wear it I could not wear it by itself I applied it and then like looked at my skin and would and immediately took a different foundation and put that over it it was that bad and it looked that disgusting on my skin that I couldn't even I couldn't even give it a single full day wear test by itself because it was just did not work for my skin obviously if it's a foundation that works for you that is awesome but it just did not work for me at all next up is the sephora bronzed matte bronzer i have mine in the shade mallorca and that is what it looks like right there it is a very pretty bronzer um very 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 warm toned i don't wear this bronzer by itself if that makes sense this is tends to be a bronzer that i will use at the farthest points of my face just for a little bit of extra depth and a little bit of extra warmth but it is definitely a little bit too warm to wear by itself again that may change as the summer progresses and i get a little bit of a tan but as of right now it's not a bronzer that i can wear by itself and it's also a bronzer that i have to be very picky about when i wear it specifically because i don't want to wear a really warm toned bronzer with like a cooler toned look like it would work with a look that it, like i'm wearing today but if i was wearing like ColourPop stone cold fox it just it would not work and it would just clash together um otherwise it is a very pretty bronzer it is a little bit powdery um and a lot picks up on the brush that is something to keep in mind it is definitely a lot more pigmented than i was actually expecting it to be no fragrance to it whatsoever anything like that so if that's something that matters to you it's nice compact good mirror in the compact next up is the Too Faced natural face palette um this is not a new product by any means i don't think i think there's only a couple things that i tried in this that are in this video that are actually new products but this is not new by any means i um I've just always had my eye on it and I never pulled the trigger until just recently. Um, and that is what the inside looks like. It comes with a really nice mirror. My only complaint is like, and I don't know if it's just me, but this is not the easiest thing to open. It's just a magnetic closure, but like you have to get your like nail into the crack to get it to open. When I very first got into makeup, I one of the first high-end palettes that I bought was actually the Too Faced bonbon, Chocolate Bonbon palette. And in that palette had the shade Satin Sheets. And it was one of the bigger pans in the palette. And that was when highlight very first started becoming a thing. And I used to, I used that. That was my very, very, very first highlight. And I loved it. I panned that whole shade. Ended up decluttering the rest of the palette because as my collection grew my taste changed and I just didn't prefer the formula anymore but I always loved satin sheets and so when they launched with this palette and it has satin sheets in it I was super excited I always wanted to try this palette I just never I just never did and finally I ended up purchasing it so let me not close this so I can see the shade names and show you guys the swatches right here so right here we have the highlight starlight followed up by satin sheets the highlight pink, or excuse me, the blush pink wink, um, the blush pink sand, and then sunny honey and tropic like it's hot as the bronzers. So full face palette, um, obviously super disappointing that there is only one style of this palette. So it will really only work for so much of 
the range of skin tones that exist. In fact, some parts of this are actually even too deep for me. So if you are fairer than I am, I wouldn't recommend this at all. And if you are anything more than like a medium, I wouldn't recommend this palette at all because it's just not going to work for you on either ends of the spectrum. But for me, I think that it's really, really pretty. I am actually wearing the two bronzers and satin sheets on my cheeks right now. I have a different blush that I'll be showing you in just a couple minutes. Overall, the thing that caught me by surprise about this entire palette was how incredibly pigmented it is. It is scarily pigmented. It will, you can get very heavy handed very, very, very quickly, especially with the bronzer shades. Um, they go on pretty heavy. So you just have to use a very, very light touch. There's one of the bronzers and one of the blushes right there. And as you can see, it's very, very, very pigmented. So you have to go in with looser brushes, lighter hands, tapping off the excess. But once you kind of figure out how to apply it that works best for you, it does look really, really pretty. Also, I don't recommend this, but when I put highlight on my Cupid's bow, I did this one time. I like put highlight on my Cupid's bow and then I went to just go like lick my lips and this palette tastes really, really good. <laughs> I don't know what's in it that tastes really good, but it tastes really good. I'm not recommending eat it, eating it. Please don't eat it. But if you happen to get a little bit on your lips, it does taste really good. Um, overall, I do really like this. I think that it's a little bit bulky and it's a lot heavier than I was expecting. I wish that it was a flat surface um, and not quite so bulky. Even the bottom isn't flat. It's got like a kind of a pillow shape to it. It's very bulky, very heavy, but I do really like it. I think it's really pretty. Yeah. It's hard for me to say that I recommend it because it won't work for everybody, but I do really like it for myself. Next up is the Jason Wu Beauty Celestial Lust Liquid Eyeshadow, and this is in the shade Lace and Grace. So this is a brand that is sold at Target. And I think if I remember correctly, somebody from NYX works at this brand. I don't know who Jason Wu is. I am so sorry. The packaging, first and foremost, very, very, very pretty. It's definitely what you would consider to be a standard component, but I like the nude, like the matte nude aesthetic to it. The kind of the whole brand has that aesthetic. Um, I love liquid eyeshadows. I used to own a whole shitload of the Stila Glitter and Glow liquid eyeshadows and kind of over the years, a lot of them started to dry out on me. So I thought, why not try a new one? So that is what it looks like right there. It is definitely a thicker formula than the Stila one. It can get a little bit, you can kind of see it a little bit chunky. Um, I like to put a little bit on my eyes, less than even what I have here. And then I will kind of start to tap it out and blend it out with my finger. And that kind of alleviates some of the chunkiness that it comes with and definitely shears it out a little bit and I'll build it up where I need to. It gets chunky with the glitter. You can kind of see where the glitter is sitting and where it isn't sitting. Um, you just have to kind of finesse it around a little bit. I don't have as much of an issue with it on my eyes as I do in a regular swatch. And I, I think that might be just because I'm not putting as much on my eyes as I do in a regular swatch, but the color is really pretty. It dries down really well. It, the formula holds the glitter onto itself. So it doesn't like fall out over the course of the day. Um, it doesn't get creasy or weird. It dries down really, really nicely. I do think it's really pretty. Um, it fills a gap in my liquid eyeshadows for the ones that have dried out because I needed that kind of like rosy, goldy, champagne-y, this color, that kind of Kitten Karma um, rose gold retro shade from the Stila Glitter and Glows. It's, this one's very similar to those. Um, you get quite a lot in here. I obviously haven't had this for long enough to tell you how quickly it's going to dry out, um, but I'm sure we will find out at some point. Um, overall, I do think that it's really, really pretty. The wand pulls out a lot of products. You definitely want to be careful. All right, last but certainly not least, I have two of the Milani baked blushes. One of these is an older shade and one of these is, I believe, actually a new shade. So I have these shades, Petal Primavera, and then I have the shade 
Sunset Passion. Sunset Passion is actually the blush that I'm wearing on my cheeks today, but let me swatch these two for you. So these are the blushes that I was talking about when I was saying I have glowy blushes that perform more like a blush and less like a highlight. Um, I have had Milani, let me double up on Petal Primavera because it is a lighter shade. Um, I've had Milani Luminoso for years and years and years and I love it. Um, but I've also tried some of the Milani baked blushes that have either been just an aggressive amount of glow or some of them have like glitter blended in with them, which I'm not the hugest fan of. But these ones right here are just blushes with a little bit of shine to them. Let me get a, a angle my hand in a way that you can see the glow. So this one right here is Petal Primavera and then this one right here is Sunset Passion. They're both really, really pretty highlights. Blend beautifully on the skin. They're very thin. They're a very, very light texture. Um, as you can see right there, you can barely see it on my finger. It's a very like just light. You do have to build these up a little bit more, especially Petal Primavera on my skin tone. Um, you have to build them up a little bit more because they're very thin, but I like that. I like a buildable blush and I just think that they're really, really pretty. They sit beautifully on the skin. They last for a really long time. They're just gorgeous blushes and I love them so, so, so much. And I'm happy to add more to my collection. I'm getting to the point where I'm about to purchase a new Luminoso because mine is old and uh, I've hit pan and they're just there. It's it's getting to the end of its life. Um, one thing I will say is I feel like Milani baked blushes are really fucking expensive. Like don't get me wrong, Luminoso has lasted me probably five or six years at this point, but I still feel like they're very expensive. This was like 11 or $12, something like that. Um, but they're gorgeous blushes, last a long time, last a long time on the skin. They're really, really nice. So that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you guys learned something new. Comment down below and let me know if you have tried any of these products and what your thoughts are, or if there's any of these products that I've talked about today that you guys want to try. I would love to know. Please subscribe if you have not already. It would mean the world to me. Like this video, ring the bell, do all the things. I hope that you guys have an awesome, awesome day, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. La, la, la.